we are going to look at the structural concept of a folding plane. First thing we'll do is we'll compare a slab to a folded plane. So if I create a slab in Rhino, and I will use the plane command to do this. And let's look at a slab that is 20 feet wide by 30 feet deep. Each one of these squares is 10 by 10. This slab will split the load from left to right. And the depth of this slab will be uh, x. Well, we can reduce that depth x by using the folded plane concept. And we'll also create a more dynamic element in architecture by doing that. So let's, let's turn off my shaded viewpoint port for a second. Let's look at creating a folded plane. So what I'll need to do is make a plane for each side, one for the left and one for the right. So I'll type in my plane command again. Create a plane for the right and create a plane for the left. Now I need to fold them about this axis. So I'll select this plane and I'm going to do this fold using a rotate 3D. Choose my axis and I'm going to rotate in the clockwise direction which is always a negative angle. So I'm going to put a negative and we'll use 30. So negative 30 degrees. And we'll do the same for our other plane. And in this case I'm going to rotate counterclockwise so this is positive. So spanning the same distance 20 feet, our folded plate will have less depth and as I mentioned a more dynamic form in architecture. We can extrude this plate and to do this we're going to use extrude direction and I want to set up my construction plane so that it's vertical so that I can pick a direction um, that's a world Z. So I'm going to type in C plane, choose world front. And now I can pick this vertical direction for my extrusion. The command I'm going to use is extrude surface. And I'm going to select my two surfaces. I have a choice of direction. So this is where I just want to pick the vertical direction. I can use my shift key or I can snap to the grid. And we're just going to choose a distance of 0.25 feet, which is around 3 inches. I can select that object, the slab, and type in hide. And we can use our concept of tessellation. This would be a three-dimensional tessellation to tile this. Let's say it's a roof. So I can type in C-plane, world, top. And we can, we can copy or mirror this. So let's just choose a copy. and we can keep going and going. So that's one type of folded plate. And we have ridges and valleys. Let's look at a more complex type of folded plate. So I can select these objects and I will type in hide. Very similar to our last example, I'm going to create 
a plate or a series of plates within this 10 by 30. So I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle just as a, as a framework or let's think of this as a module to work within. So we're going to take this rectangle and break it down into four triangles. So to help this, I'm going to draw a line down the middle. Okay, so we'll have two triangles on either side of this line. So I can use my polyline command and draw the triangles. Let's make this a little more clear by starting to use some layers. So let's make this layer one the current layer. So I'm going to draw a triangle here and then I'm going to draw one on the other side. So there, if I turn off that default layer, two triangles. And I can mirror that to the other side. And I'll turn off my default layer. Okay, so there's my framework. I'll rename this layer to curves. I'll make a layer called surfaces. Eventually, we will have meshes. Okay, so now I'm going to start the process of folding these plates. We're going to continue to use a 30 degree angle. So I'll start with our first triangle. And we're going to rotate this 30 degrees about this axis. So we're going to fold it along this axis. So we can use our 3D rotate and we can pick this axis and I'm going to rotate that counterclockwise so positive 30. So we see that. Now I'm going to take the remaining planes and I'm going to fold them clockwise. Again, using my Rotate 3D, that same axis of rotation. So this time clockwise, so negative 30. And I can continue folding. Now, the remaining two planes, I have to bring them above the zero degree line. So 30 degrees will bring it to zero and another 30 degrees above. So a total of 60 degrees positive because it's going to be counterclockwise. So rotate 3D along this axis. And we're going to go counterclockwise, so positive 60 degrees. And then my last plane, I want to rotate it down 30 degrees below zero. So this is going to be clockwise, so negative 60 degrees. So again, rotate 3D, pick my axes. negative 60. Okay, so that's one module of our folded plate. And it's spanning, in this case we're spanning 10 feet in this direction, 30 feet in this direction. So our output is going to be 3D printing, so we need to turn this module uh, eventually into a watertight mesh. So 
let's look at first extruding these curves. And I want to extrude them in the world Z direction. So I'm going to set my C plane to front so that I have a vertical construction plane to work with. I'll type in C plane, choose world front. And I can extrude all these curves at once. So let's see, if I make the layer surfaces current and I select all the curves and I start to type in extrude curve, I need to make sure that cap yes is on. And I'm going to choose a direction, which is just a vertical direction. I can even snap to the grid out here as long as I draw a vertical line. And again, we'll use our quarter foot dimension. So press enter. Okay, so there we have our surfaces. And we have some nice mitered corners because we extruded them all in the same direction. Okay, so I can turn off my curves layer, set my C plane back to world top, and now we can mirror these surfaces to tile, do our tessellation, our three dimensional tessellation, to tile this roof. So if I select them all, and I will type in mirror. And I'll use the top edges as the mirror axis. And I'll take these and I'll do it once more. Okay. So there we have our folded plate roof. So the goal is to turn this into a watertight solid. So what we can do is we can use the command boolean union to boolean all of these surfaces. Right now they're just surfaces. So boolean union will will join them together. So we'll start to type in boolean, boolean union, select surfaces or poly surfaces to union. We'll select them all. Press enter let Rhino work for us. Let's make our layer meshes current and we'll type in the mesh command. Now this is when we did the boolean union this became one object. So I'll press enter. Doesn't matter this is still very orthographic geometry so the amount of polygons doesn't matter so we can choose OK. As we've seen in the past when it makes the mesh it keeps the mesh on the same layer as the surface doesn't change it to the current layer so we can select mesh select our mesh bring up our object properties panel and change it to our meshes layer and turn off the surface layer. Okay, so the question is, is this water type? Type in the command check mesh and we have a good mesh and we don't have any of these properties that would make it bad for 3D printing, especially naked edges. So we have a valid mesh, if I look down here and it's a closed polygon mesh. So this is ready for 3D printing. 